أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على سراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنزر قوما ما أنزر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد أقل القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأثقان فهم مقمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم أنزرتهم أم لم تنزرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنزر من اتبع الذكر وخشي الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة وأجر كريم إنا نحن نحيي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحسيناه في إمام مبين واضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية إذ جاء أهل مرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليه مثنين فكذبوهما فعززنا بثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم ولا يمسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فترني وإليه ترجعون أتخذ من دونه آلهة إن يردني الرحمن بذر لا تغني عني شفاعتهم شيئا ولا ينقذون إني إذا لفي ذلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل ادخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محذرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما عملت أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدناه منازل حتى عاد كالأرجون القديم لا الشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذرية في الفلك المشحون وأخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإنا شنقركم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاع إلى حين وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أن نطعم من لو يشاء الله أطعمه 
إن أنتم إلا في ظلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توصية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في الصور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محذرون فاليوم لا تظلم النفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ذلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب الرحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أحد إليكم يا بني آدم أن لا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وعني بدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أذل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون إسلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يقصبون ولو نشاء لتمسنا على عيونهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكسه في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حي ويحك القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محذرون فلا يحذنك قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم ير الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وذرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيى العذام وهي رميم قل يهيها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأكثر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد سرة المباركة الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم إني يدعوك كما أمرتني فاستجب لي كما وعدتني إنك لا تخلف الميعاد اللهم إني أسألك برحمتك التي وسعت كل شيء وبقوتك التي قهرت بها كل شيء 
وخضع لها كل شيء وذل لها كل شيء وبجبروتك التي غلبت بها كل شيء وبعزتك التي لا يقوم لها شيء وبعظمتك التي ملأت كل شيء وبسلطانك الذي علاها كل شيء وبوجهك الباقي بعد فناء كل شيء وبأسمائك التي ملأت أركان كل شيء وبعلمك الذي أحاط بكل شيء وبنور وجهك الذي يضاء له كل شيء يا نور يا قدوس يا أول الأولين ويا آخر الآخرين اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تهتك العصام اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تنزل النقام اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تغير النعام اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تحبس الدعاء اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تقطع الرجاء اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تنزل البلاء اللهم اغفر لي كل ذنب اذنبته وكل خطيئة اخطأتها اللهم اني يتقرب اليك بذكرك واستشفع بك الى نفسك وأسألك بجودك أن تدنيني من قربك وأن توزعني شكرك وأن تلهمني ذكرك اللهم إني أسألك سؤال من سؤال خاضئ متذلل خاشع أن تسامحني وترحمني وتجعلني بقسمك راضئا قانعا وفي جميع الأهوال متواضعا اللهم وأسألك سؤالا من اشتدت فاقتهم وأنزل بك عند الشدائد حاجتهم وعظم فيما عندك رغبتهم اللهم أضم سلطانك وعلى مكانك وخفي مكرك وظهر أمرك وغلب قهرك وجرت قدرتك ولا يمكن الفرار من حكومتك اللهم لا أجد لذنوبي غافرا ولا لقبائح ساترا ولا لشيء من عملي القبيح بالحسن مبدلا غيرك لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك وبحمدك ظلمت نفسي وتجرأت بجهله وسكنت إلى قديم ذكرك لي ومنك علي اللهم مولاي كم من قبيح سترت وكم من فادح من البلاء يقلت وكم من عثار وقيت وكم من مكروه دفعته وكم من ثناء جميل لست وأهلا له نشرت اللهم عظم بلائي وفرط بي سوء حالي وقصرت بي عمالي وقعدت بي غلالي وحبسني النفع بعد آمالي وخضعتني الدنيا بغرورها 
ونفسي بجرايتها ومطاني يا سيدي فأسألك بعزتك ألا يهجب عنك دعائي سوء عملي وفعالي ولا تفضحني بخفي ما اطلعت عليه من سري ولا تعاجل لي بالعقوبة على ما على ما عملته في خلواتي من سوء فعلي وإساءتي ودوام تفريطي وجهالتي وكثرة شهواتي وغفلتي وكن اللهم بعزتك لي في كل الأحوال رؤوفا وعلي في جميع الأمور عطوفا إلهي وربي من لي غيرك أسأله كشف ضري والنظر في أمري إلهي ومولاي أجريت علي حكما اتبعت فيه هوى نفسي ولم أهترس في من تزين عدوي فغرني بما أهوى وأسعده على ذلك القضاء فتجاوزت بما جرى علي من ذلك بعد حدودك وخالفت بعض أوامرك فلك الحجة علي في جميع ذلك ولا حجتني فيما جرى علي في قضاءك وألزمني حكمك وبلاءك وقد أتيتك يا إلهي بعد تقصيري وإسرافي على نفسي معتدرا نادما منكسرا مستقيلا مستغفرا منيبا مقرا مذعنا معترفا لا أجد مفرا مما كان مني ولا مفزع نتوجه إليه في أمري غير قبولك وضلي وإدخالك إياي في سعة من رحمتك اللهم فقبل عضلي ورحم شدة ضلي وفكني من شد وثاقي يا رب رحم ضعف بدني ورقة جلدي ودقة عظمي يا من بدا خلقي وذكري وتربيتي وبري وتغذيتي هبني لابتداء كرمك وسال فيه برك بي يا الهي وسيدي وربي اتراك معذبي بنارك بعد توحيدك وبعد من طوى عليه قلبي من معرفتك ولهج به لساني من ذكرك واعتقده ضميري من حبك وبعد صدق اعترافي ودعائي خاضعا لربوبيتك هيهانت أنت أكرم من أن تضيع من ربيت أو تبعد من أدنيت أو تشرد من آويت أو تسلم إلى البلاء من كفيته ورحمت وليت شئري يا سيدي وإلهي ومولاي أتسلط النار على وجوه خلت لعظمتك ساجدا وعلى السن نطقت بتوحيدك صادقا وبشكرك مادحا 
وعلى قلوب اعترفت بإلهيتك محققا وعلى ضمائر حوت من العلم بك إن حتى صارت خاشعا وعلى جوارح سعت إلى أوطان تعبدك طائعا وأشارت باستغفارك مذئنا ما هكذا الظن بك ولا أخبرنا بفضلك عنك يا كريم يا كريم يا رب وأنت تعلم ضعفي أن قليل من بلاء الدنيا وعقوباتها وما يجري فيها من المكاره على أهلها على أن ذلك بلاء ومكروه قليل مكثو يسير بقاء قصير مدته فكيف اهتمالي لبلاء الآخرة وجليل وقوع المكاره فيها وهو بلاء تطول مدته ويدوم مقام ولا يخفف عن أهله لأنه لا يكون إلا غضبك وانتقامك وسخطك وهذا ما لا تقوم له السماوات والأرض يا سيدي فكيف بي وأنا عبدك الضئيف الذليل الحقير المسكين المستكين يا إلهي وربي وسيدي ومولاي لأي الأمور إليك أشكو ولما منها أضج وأبكي لأليم العذاب وشدته أم لطول البلاء ومدته فلئن صيرتني للعقوبات مع أعدائك وجمعت بيني وبين أهل بلائك وفرقت بيني وبين أهبائك وأوليائك فهبني يا إلهي وسيدي ومولاي وربي صبرت على عذابك فكيف أصبر على فراقك وهبني صبرت على حر نارك فكيف أصبر عن النظر إلى كرامتك أم كيف أسكن في النار ورجائي عفوك فبعزتك يا سيدي ومولاي أقسم صادقا لئن تركتني ناطقا لأضجن إليك بين أهلها ضجيج الآمنين ولأصرخن إليك صراخ المستصرخين ولأبكين عليك بكاء الفاقدين ولو نادينك أين كنت يا ولي المؤمنين يا غاية آمان العارفين يا غياث المستغيثين يا حبيب قلوب الصادقين ويا إله العالمين أفتراك سبحانك يا إلهي وبحمدك تسمع فيها صوت عبد مسلم سجن فيها بمخالفته وذاقت عما عذابها بمعصيته 
وحبص بين أتباقها بجرمه وجريرته وهو يضج إليك ضجيج مؤمل لرحمتك ويناديك بلسان أهل توحيدك ويتوسل إليك بربوبيتك يا مولاي يا مولاي فكيف يبقى في العذاب وهو يرجو ما سلف من حلمك أم كيف تؤلمه النار وهو يأمل فضلك ورحمتك أم كيف يهرقه لهيبها وأنت تسمع صوته وترى مكانا أم كيف يشتمل عليه زفيرها وأنت تعلم ضعفا أم كيف يتقلغل بين أطباقها وأنت تعلم صدقا أم كيف تزجر زبانيتها وهو يناديك يا ربا أم كيف يرجو فضلك في يتقه منها فتترك فيها هيهات ما ذلك الظن بك ولا المأروف من فضلك ولا مشبه لما عملت به الموحدين من برك وإحسانك فباليقين فباليقين يقتأ لولا ما حكمت به من تعذيب جاهديك وقضيت به من نخلاد معانديك لجعلت النار كلها بردا وسلاما وما كان لأهد فيها مقرا ولا مقاما لكنك تقدست أسماؤك أن تملأها من الكافرين من الجنة والناس يجمعين وأن تخلد فيها المعاندين وأن تجل ثناؤك قلت مبتدئا وتطولت بالإنعام متكرما أفمن كان مؤمنا كمن كان فاسقا لا يستؤون إلهي وسيدي فأسألك بالقدرة التي قدرتها وبالقضية التي حتمتها وحكمتها وغلبت من عليه يجريتها أن تهب لي في هذه الليلة وفي هذه الساعة كل جرم نجرمت وكل ذنب نذنبت وكل قبيه نسررت وكل جهل وكل جهل عملته كتمته وعلنت أخفيته وظهرت وكل سيئة أمرت بإثبات الكرام الكاتبين الذين وكلتهم بحفظ ما يكون مني وجعلتهم شهودا علي مع جوارحي وكنت أنت الرقيب علي من ورائهم والشاهد لما خفي عنهم وبرحمتك خفيت وبفضلك سترت وأن توفر حظي من كل خير تنزله أو إحسان تفضله أو بر تنشره أو رزق تبسطه أو ذم تغفره أو خطأ تستر يا ربي يا ربي يا رب يا إلهي وسيدي ومولاي ومالك رقي يا من بيده ناصيتي يا علي من بظلي ومسكنتي يا خبيرا بفقري وفاقتي 
أسألك بحقك وقدسك وأعظم صفاتك وأسمائك أن تجعل أوقاتي في الليل والنهار بذكرك معمورا وبخدمتك موصولا وأعمالي عندك مقبولا حتى تكون أعمالي وأورادي كلها وردا واحدا وحالي في خدمتك سرمدا يا سيدي يا من عليه معولي يا من عليه شكوت أهوالي يا ربي يا ربي يا رب قو على خدمتك جوارحي واشد على العزيمة جوانه وهم لي الجد في خشيتك والدوام في الاتصال بخدمتك حتى أصرح إليك في ميادين السابقين وأصنع إليك في المبادلين وأشتاق إلى قربك في المشتاقين وأدنو منك دنو المخلصين وأخافك مخافة الموقنين واجتمع في جوارك مع المؤمنين اللهم ومن أرادني بسوء فأرد ومن كادني فكد واجعلني من نهسن عبيدك نصيبا عندك وقربهم منزلة منك وخصهم زلفة لديك فإنه لا ينال ذلك إلا بفضلك وجدني بجودك وأعطف علي بمجدك واحفظني واجعل لساني بذكرك لهجا وقلبي بحبك متيما ومن علي بحسن إجابتك وأقلني أثرتي واغفر زلتي فإنك قضيت على عبادك بعبادتك وأمرتهم بدعائك وضمنت لهم الإجابة فإليك يا ربي نصبت وجهي وإليك يا ربي مددت يدي فبعزتك استجب لي دعائي وبلغني مناي ولا تقطع من فضلك رجائي واكفني شر الجن والإنس من عدائي يا سريع الرضا اغفر لمن لا يملك إلا الدعاء فإنك فعال لما تشاء يا من اسمه دواء وذكره شفاء وطاعته غنى ارحم من رأس ماله الرجاء وسلاحه البكاء يا صابع النعم يا دافع النقام يا نور المستوحشين في الظلام يا عالم لا يعلم صل على محمد وآل محمد وافعل بي ما أنت أهله وصلى الله على رسوله والأئمة الميامين من آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا سورة المباركة الفاتحة
افضل السلام السلام عليك يا رسول الله محمد وال محمد والله صل على محمد يا شيك سبحان امام جعفر صادق اے دین کے سلطان امام جعفر صادق اے عاشق امام جعفر صادق اے دین کے سلطان سلوات پر ذکر ہے چھٹے امام کا نور خدا شہن شہ علی مقام کا یا رب ہمیں توفیق دے مد ہے امام کا صدقہ دے ہمیں حضرت سادی کے نام کا ہے آشی کے سبحان امام سادی دین کے سلطان امام جا پر سادی کیا سل اللہ شان ہے مولا کی ہمارے اللہ کے پیارے ہے پیمبل کے ہے پیارے گھر وقت مصیبت میں کوئی حضرت کو پکارے فل فور مدد کرتے ہیں زہرا کے دلارے ہیں آشی کے سکھ مام جعفر سادی مولا سوال لائے ہے خالی نفیر نا دامن ہمارے گوہر مقصود سے بھرنا نظر منائے ہم نے جو مقبول ہی کرنا دربار سے میں اس کسی کو نہ پھیرنا اے آشی کے سبحان امام چافر سادی کہہ دی ہر صبح و شام میری دعا ہے میرے مولا ہے عشق مدینہ سے میرا دل ترپ رہا یا سبت مصطفیٰ ہمیں بل واو کر بلا چومے ذریعے پاک شہن شائے کر بلا ہے آشی کے سبحان امام جعفر صادق اے دین کے سلطان امام جعفر صادی رحم اللہ من کرع سورة البارکة الفاتحة
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Sayyidah San Rizvi, respected elders, brothers, sisters in Iman, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Surifat is requested for all the names listed on the screen and call Arwah al-Mu'mineen wal-Mu'minat, Sawab al-Fatiha. Ayat Yajiban is requested for all the names listed on the screen and whoever is in need of it here and elsewhere. Let us all recite it together. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amman Yajibul Mustorra Ida Dara Huayakshifusu. Amman Yajibul Mustorra Ida Dara Huayakshifusu. Amman Yajibul Mustorra Ida Dara Huayakshifusu. Amman Yujibul Muzparra Iza Da'ah Wa Yakshifu Su Amman Yujibul Muzparra Iza Da'ah Wa Yakshifu Su Allahumma Suli Ala Muhammad Wa Ala Muhammad The latest Muladat celebration which was supposed to be held on this Saturday has been postponed to the following Saturday, March 13th, due to the prediction of rain. There have been some valuables found in the ladies section. Any ladies who is missing their valuable item, please reach out to Sister Fatima Abdul Hussain to claim your item. Now let us invite Said to come forward to recite tonight's Madlis by Muhammad in Wali Muhammad Salawat. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله إلا بالله العلي العظيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى جنة فرجه ثم الصلاة والسلام والتحية والإكرام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المذلومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الأولين والآخرين إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Mu'mineen, mu'minat, brothers and sisters in Islam and Iman, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, let's start by going through uh, the, I think, a few questions on Slido. I think my memory serves me correct. One of them was asking about uh, cats, whether they can be kept as pets, and whether, oh, there we go. Yeah, are we allowed to have a cat as a pet? Uh, my parents have mentioned that cat hair is nudges, so I just wanted to know the fiqh rules. So uh, I don't recall seeing any marja. Uh, again, I don't know which maraja you and your family and your parents follow, but as far as what I understand from Aydul Sistani and most prominent maraja, uh, cat hair is not nudges, but because, it, uh, because of its nature, 
if enough cat hair is on your clothes while you pray salah, that salat would not count, right? Because we have to make sure that the clothes that we're praying in, not just tahir, that's one part of it, but it also has to be made sure that it's made from, you know, proper material, right? So you can't have like, you know, certain animal fur and things like that. So, I mean, one or two whiskers is not a big deal. But what Ayatul Sistani, Hafadullah, and most marajas say is that if all that cat hair, it's enough that it's almost as if you can make like a piece of clothing or like a handkerchief, you know, like there's a lot of cat hair on you, on you, that would invalidate your prayers, right? But uh, yeah, if it's just, you know, a few, you know, pieces of hair or whiskers, whatever, that's not a big deal necessarily. So the first part of it is, are we allowed to have them as a pet? Yeah. Even if cats, for some reason, were nudges, you could still have it as a pet. I mean, dogs and pigs are obviously nudges, and you can have them as a pet. The only difference is, is that, at least for dogs, it's makru to keep them in the house. Now, I don't recall any ruling about pigs. I don't know who would want to keep a pig in their house or even outside, but I guess for farmers, maybe, I don't know. But yeah, just because something's nudges doesn't mean you have to just completely stay away. I mean, many people, they use dogs for hunting, as a guard dog, right? Depending. We don't really use them here, but, you know, so you can still do that even if it was nudges. But as far as I've seen uh, regarding cats, no, they're not nudges. Now, I can understand, right? Because uh, cat hair can be, can be difficult to, to deal with uh, if they're shedding, depending on what kind of cat they are. It can be a lot of maintenance. Uh, so, you know, in our house, we've wanted to have a, have a cat for a long time. Inshallah, we get a more appropriate sized house. Kids get a little older, then maybe we'll get one. You know, there are some opinions of ulama that, you know, cats and, you know, other animals, they have these specific characteristics as well. It's good to keep certain animals in the house. Like they say certain types of birds will do istighfar for you. Some of them will do la'na on the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt. Uh, some of them will protect you against uh, nadar and jinn and things like that, right? If I, think, I think cats may do that. They may protect against nadar or um, jinn. I can't remember which one. I remember hearing this from one of the ulama in, in Qum. So some of these Pets, having them in the home can have blessings, right? But again, it's up to your parents. Maybe they have a good reason to not keep it in the house. So it's best you see and go with what they advise. Okay. Uh, so there's two here. So let me, I guess, go with the one that was related to last week. So I did talk about duas.org, right? Um, which parts of duas.org don't you agree with? So I don't know if that's, I understand where, why you're phrasing it like that, but that, that's not the best way to phrase it, right? See, we have to understand what is duas.org. Right? The people who, you can look at their about, about us page. Alaikum salam. The people who put it together, you know, everything's listed there. They've collected some of the various things that have been mentioned in Mafatih al-Janan of Sheikh Abbas Qummi, rahmatullah alayhi, and other, and other dua books. Some famous, some not so famous. And what they've tried to do is take all of that, put it on the website, and, you know, at least keep it available for us in, you know, with the Arabic there, with the English, and sometimes with some sort of explanation, transliteration. And alhamdulillah, it's been a blessing and a benefit for most of us who maybe don't have access to an English copy of these dua books. Now, the concept of dua or ziyarat or all of these kind of mustahab recitations, qiraat and things that we do, this is a whole separate discussion. I don't want to spend too much time, but I think most of us need to hear a little bit about this. We get these duas, these ziyarat, all these a'mal, we get them from these, you know, hadith books, obviously. Whether it's the Kutub Arba of our, you know, main shuyukh, like uh, Sheikh Al Kulaini from Al Kafi, for example, or the books of Sheikh Al Tusi or Sheikh Al Mufid, whoever it is. So we have those books, and then there are other secondary hadith books that we are, we can also get, you know, our narrations about various things, like including du'a, a'mal, ziyarat, and things like that. Every single alim, every single not alim, mujtahid or marja, they have their own ijtihad. So when they are authenticating, certifying, and checking to see if a certain hadith is valid or not, they have their own method. And you'll have ulama that disagree, right? This is the nature of, of somebody who's an expert. Amar Ajit, although they agree on a lot of things, there are certain principles that maybe a good amount of them go one way, and then maybe one or two go another way. And again, this is part of their discussions. And one, you know, one example is, I think I mentioned it when we talked about Laylatul Al-Ghaib. So this principle known as uh, Whether somebody, if a narration is weak and the narration is talking about a certain dua or ziyara or a'mal or something mustahab there's two different opinions some say, based on again all the evidence which I don't want to mention they say look, we have evidence from the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Allahumma salli ala Muhammad that look if something reaches you 
and it seems like it could be from us, even if the evidence is not super, you know, super strong, if it's something mustahab, not wajib, haram, or anything like that, we're talking about something recommended, mustahab. If you see a hadith, even if it's weak, and somebody acts upon that, then inshallah, Allah will still give them the reward. Right? So a lot of these a'mal, the evidence may not be very strong. Right? I don't want to, again, use the word inauthentic. That's not the best way to describe it. But maybe the evidence isn't strong. Maybe it's in a weak book, or oh, there's only one narration, or the narrators in the chain are weak, whatever it is. People who agree with this principle, qa'ida uh, tisamuh, will say, look, because of the other proof that we've given, we can still consider this mustahab, and you can still recite it, and inshallah, Allah will give you the reward. Others, like Ayatollah Sistani, for example, Hafadullah, don't believe in this principle. That's why if you do decide to perform an a'mal or a ziyara or a dua, whatever, something mustahab, that he doesn't believe there's strong evidence for, he says, look, you can do it, but you can't go and say that this is part of the deen. You cannot say that this is something mustahab. You can do it with the niyyah of raja atrubiya. That I hope and I pray that Allah will give me rewards for this. But again, this is a, a distinction they talk about in legal, legal theory. Most of us don't really hear that because a lot of ulama don't want to discuss it. They don't think it's you know, important. But when it comes to this stuff, on these websites like duas.org or all these apps that are out there, they're just taking all of this information in various books and just dumping it in front of all of us. Now, think about, not just like Islamically, but think about any other discipline or field. Let's say there was some website dedicated to all the research regarding COVID, right? And beating the pandemic. Or if you get COVID, what, you should, what should you do? So now imagine there's a whole bunch of different prescriptions there. You know, there's a bunch of articles, scholarly, academic articles, medical articles that say, you know, wear masks, here's the uh, efficacy. Um, but then there are also articles there that say, don't wear masks because they're a waste of time. Then you also have articles which say, you know, taking vitamin C or taking vitamin D while you have COVID, it has not been proven to, to reduce symptoms. So don't do that. Whereas you, they, may, they may list other articles on that same website that say, no, if you, you know, have whatever, 10,000 or 20,000 IUs of vitamin D or C, it has, you know, been shown to help get rid of and lessen the symptoms of COVID. So imagine all of that information is put out there on this website. You and I, the ones who are not medical experts here, we go and we check what's on there. What are we supposed to do with that? Are we the ones supposed to decide, you know, which one should I take, which one should I not take? If we're not medical experts, it doesn't make any sense. And that's why most of these sites, if they do exist and they have this stuff there, even things like WebMD or any of these other places that seem to advise us on what to do or give information about symptoms and cures and diseases, it says, with a disclaimer, before and after, make sure to consult your own doctor. Your doctor has to tell you what to do, not this website. Right? We have to stop self-diagnosing, basically. The same thing is going to apply. Duaz.org does not tell you what your marja's opinion is. And actually, if you look at the About Me page, it does have that disclaimer too in Duaz.org. It says, look, we just collected everything. We're not telling you it's mustahab or not. In fact, it says that you know, for certain marja, you will have to do a niyyah of raja matrubiya. But if you go to this specific dua or ziyara or whatever page, it's not going to say that. So many of us maybe didn't know that and khair, you know, whatever. My issue is this, is that, you know, general individuals, you won't know what books it came from, or even if it lists it there, you won't be able to authenticate it. And even if you want to find out what is Ayatollah Sistani's opinion, how are you going to find that out? It's not always going to be available in English. A lot of these answers, I mean, it's only recently, for example, regarding Laylatul Raghaib. Even though communities have been practicing it for, you know, it's a recent phenomenon, I'd say. It's only very recently that people now in the English language have come out and said, look, maybe as far as the authenticity, it's questionable. You have to have a different niyyah if you're going to perform it, if you're in the taqlid of Ayatul Sistani or these marajah, right? But this is something that in kind of the rest of the world, they, they kind of already knew that. We are, unfortunately, in the English-speaking world, especially in the West, we're playing catch-up to a lot of these ideas. Now, why that's the case, separate discussion. So it's not about me disagreeing or agreeing with a part of duas.org. All I'm saying is that, look, most people, if you don't know what to look for, it's not going to do you any good. You're just going to be looking through all of these things like, okay, du'a for you know, curing this, ziyara for this and this. You won't know which of them is something that you should be doing or not doing. The other part of it too, which we should keep in mind, is all of these recommended du'as and a'mal, like you know, a cure to protect against another, this cure to protect against, you know, or to increase your risk, all the things that they have listed on the website or anywhere else that you might find this stuff. Those du'as 
according to many of our ulama, are not just general prescriptions for everybody. Sometimes, again, we just grab something and say, oh, I can go ahead and act upon that. But what many of our ulama believe is that, look, when we find these things in the narrations that recite this du'a for risk, recite this du'a for protection while traveling, whatever it is, many of our ulama say, look, those are specific prescriptions given to the specific companions that ask the questions, not for every single individual to, ask, to, to, to do. Even, for example, the A'mal of Umm Dawood. In one of the narrations, which you know, mentions it, the famous one, the sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far Sadiq, alayhi salatu wasalam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi In one version of the narration, he is saying, when he's you know, speaking to Umm Dawood, he's saying, do not go and tell everybody this. This is not an A'mal for everybody. But now you've seen pretty much every Shia you know, ends up knowing about it. So it seems like, you know, the Imam seemed to have said one thing and then we are taking something else there. Again, why that's the case, why it's happened, it's a socio-political historical discussion. I don't want to open that up. But, look, I understand. It's not easy to change the way that we've been doing things. Right? It, it's very, very difficult. We've been doing things in our communities, for, you know, for a certain way for a long time. And that's become a part of our identity. Now, if, as individuals, we're looking to grow, then we should be okay with hearing something different and say, look, Maybe that was incorrect, and now you got to change. You know, if somebody was incorrectly performing wudu for 20, 30 years of their life, and somebody came and corrected them, like this, that, that sheikh that was, you know, corrected by Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, alayhi wa salam, that sheikh took it and said, okay, you know, I was doing it wrong. In the same way, if we're open to new information, that's good for our spiritual growth. But we have to ask the question, are we ready for new information? Are we ready to say that, look, some of the things we may have been doing, Maybe they're not, I don't want to say incorrect or wrong or haram or anything like that, but maybe it was based on weak information and maybe there's something better we may be able to do in its place. If we keep that open mind, then we can still hang on to some of the things that we do. We just may have to kind of tweak it, you know, a little bit, which I guess will have to bring us to the next question. If you can recite a salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So what is sufro and what is its significance in Islam? So, if you're not in a Khoja Jamaat, the word sufro, you know, is not something that you'll, you'll know. You'll, you'll be, I'm not familiar with that word. In other communities, like usually Indian Pakistani communities, we'll have kunde, right? So, every community, or sometimes you'll call it the nazar or niyaz, right? So, what people have in mind is that there's something that took place, there's some sort of significance on the 22nd of Rajab. Because of what took place based on a, a narration that's attributed to the sixth imam and this whole long story, which I don't want to go through. Based on that, the long story short is that individuals should make specific types of food, right? Apparently, kirpuri. If they do that, right, in clay pots, they seek the wasila, the intercession intermediary of our sixth imam. They ask their hajat to Allah. Allah grant us this through this wasila of the sixth imam. Inshallah, Allah will grant it. Right? This is, again, summarized, filtered version of what goes on. So a few, a few different things. In Islam, do we have any sort of significance of performing a nadr or a manna? Meaning, saying that, Allah, I have some need in my life. I have a desire. I have some difficulty. I'm going to promise something. Maybe it's giving out food. Maybe it's giving charity, whatever it is. And I'm going to make it conditional upon, you know, the granting of my desire. Meaning, I'm trying to get a new job. If I get the new job, then I'm going to feed whatever, 100 mu'minin. Or I'm trying to get married. If I get married, I'll feed whatever, 200 mu'minin, for example. So we have these concepts there. You can find it in your Tawdi al-Masail. You know, there's Ahad, Ain Hadal, there's Nadar, uh, there's Manna. All these things have their own rules. You can go ahead and read that. So that concept is obviously there. So, and of course, the other concept is Tawassul. Seeking intercession to the Ahlul Bayt. Obviously, we have the concept too. So that's also significant. Now, can we directly ask Allah? Yeah, of course you can. But of course the question is, what is more likely to succeed? What is more likely to reach Allah? Is it me, somebody who barely understands Allah, saying, Allah, please grant me this? Or is it saying, Allah, by the right, by the haqq of Muhammad al Muhammad, by the haqq of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad By the haqq and the right and the reality of those who really understood, the only ones who truly understood you, I'm asking for that. That makes much more sense, right? It seems much more rational and reasonable to ask using the wasila, the intermediary, through the individuals who truly knew Allah. Of course that makes sense. And we also 
can seek the wasila of ulama and urafa as well. Right? There's nothing wrong with that too. So that concept also has significance too. So, feeding mu'mineen, significance, we know that. Making another or a manna or, you know, making some sort of conditional thing with Allah, that's also there. Uh, you know, seeking wasila from the Ahlul Bayt, all those parts and pieces are there. Now the question is this. Did something actually take place in this, longer, this long narration that some of you are familiar with, with this woodcutter and all of this stuff on the 22nd of Rajab? Based on the... I don't, even, I, I don't think I can even say majority. I think the absolute consensus of the ulama, this didn't take place. There, there is no such event on the 22nd of Rajab. Right? Nothing really happened there. The narration that they try to find does not exist in any of our books, whether it's primary, secondary, tertiary, I don't know the word for fourth level, what is it, quadrary, <laughs> whatever that is. We don't have them in our books. Again, people are, well, you know, you can do your own research if you'd like, or we can talk about it some other time. The first time this really shows up is in the 1900s in India. I mean, we should, you know, think about it a little bit. If a narration from the imam is saying to make kirpuri, you know, you should think about, you know, kirpuri is something that comes from India and Pakistan, right? Right? I mean, like, clay, even clay pots, okay, maybe they, they had those, that's fine. But I'm saying the specific dish that some people decide to, to make, did they have that during that time of the sixth imam or any of the imams? Did they have that? Okay, maybe somebody from India came and taught the imam. Okay, <laughs> is there a possibility? Maybe. But for the imam to mention that specific food by name and do that, it's far-fetched, highly unlikely. Now, can you decide that, okay, I'm going to, if Allah, you do this for me, through the right of Muhammad and Muhammad, through the right of the sixth imam, I want to feed mu'mineen with kirpuri. Or I'm going to feed, you know, gulab jamun or biryani, whatever it is. Go ahead and do that. There's nothing wrong with that. The issue is if we specifically have this idea in our mind that the sixth imam specifically said on the 22nd of Rajab, make this specific food with this specific method, we don't have evidence for that. Now, can we do all of this? Can you do it every 22nd of Rajab or 21st of Rajab or 20th or any day? You can do it any day. No problem. You can feed the mu'mini. You can make another or a manna. You can do all the same stuff just with the general niya that I'm doing this for the, from, you know, with the wasid of the Ahlul Bayt to feed the mu'minin to get a hajat answered. So you can do the exact same stuff. Just, again, tweak your niya and say, look, there's no direct instructions from the sixth imam that says anything like that. But if you decide you want to do this, you want to give kirpuri, right? You want to serve all this other food. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to recommend you to serve all that stuff because, I, I, I mean, we have enough people with diabetes and blood pressure and cholesterol and all this. I would suggest something a bit more healthy, but khair, I mean, that's what people like. No problem. Serve whatever you want, makes the happy, no problem, right? But if it's not Kiro Kira, then I'm probably not going to have it. So if you want to take me out for sushi in the name of the sixth imam, I'm all ears. Like, I'll do sushi, fine, right? I'll, you want to take me out for filet mignon in the name of the fourth imam? Let's go. I I'm ready anytime. So we can do all these things. And there's nothing wrong with it. So if somebody wants to tweak it their own way too, okay, we should be okay with that as well. So the idea is this. Yes, maybe it doesn't seem like it's that authentic, no problem. But can we keep that same practice? Yeah, you can. There's nothing wrong with it. All we're doing is changing our niyyah around and just saying that this is a general niyyah, a general thing. I have another, I have a hajat. I'm doing it through the tawassul of the Ahlul Bayt, specifically through the sixth imam. That's a great thing to do. Nothing wrong with that. You want to give specific food, no problem. You want to cook it a specific way, do whatever you want. Mu'mineen here who love that food, they'll be happy. And when you make mu'mineen happy, then inshallah your ajr is with Allah. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So, inshallah, we'll have our quiz towards the end. So, if you can log in now, then that would be good. So, again, look, just as a disclaimer too, I'm not in the business of trying to actively just like destroy everything that our communities are used to. At the same time, I also have a wadifa and a duty that if something, there seems to be very clear evidence that, you know, we don't really have anything there for it, I can't come here and lie. I have a responsibility, right, to speak on what I've researched and what i found from my teachers on whether something's right or wrong. Now, if you want, I'm not going to call them loopholes, but if you still want to keep the practice, we can keep them. There's nothing wrong with that. For almost all of these events, as I said, Laylatul Raghaib, you could have still performed the A'mal with Niya Raja Matlubiya. There's nothing wrong with that. Even for, for this event, right? On any night, you can still do the same thing. So nothing's really changed, just a little tweaking here and there. But again, my point is this, is that we just have to open ourselves up to maybe slight changes here and there. If we can do that, you'll see, inshallah, hopefully the rewards will increase and maybe our spirituality will increase a bit more. Because at the end of the day, the reason we're trying to do any of these actions 
whether it's, again, kunde, sufro, whatever it is, is because we're trying to do something that pleases Allah, something that the Ahlul Bayt have recommended. So if we don't have the direct recommendation, no problem, we can figure out another way where it's still a general recommendation, and inshallah, we'll still get the rewards for it. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Okay, so we are continuing our discussion, a commentary on the dua of Rajab. Last time we talked about how sometimes our du'as can be very spiritually immature, right? Like toddlers. In the same way that a child, they say certain things, they ask for certain things. They'll ask for TV and junk food and all this stuff, right? Maybe they ask for kirpuri all the time, whatever it is. <laughs> they ask for this and they'll complain if they don't get it. A good parent will see beyond that and they'll look for their actual needs. Well, in this case, they actually do want kirpuri, so that's a, <laughs> for adults, that's what they want. But we said for us, if we're trying to grow, we have to be careful that we're not looking for specific, materialistic, worldly, dunyawi things. That's a spiritually immature way of looking at it. So if we're specifically saying, Allah, give me this, this job, or this increase in money, or X, Y, Z, well, that may or may not be what's beneficial for us, right? So that's a kind of very toddler-esque way of asking dua. So that's one hurdle we have to be careful of. The other side is, even sometimes when we don't ask for physical, dunyawi, materialistic things, even spiritually speaking, we can ask for things which might not be in our favor, right? We can pray for ourselves, for, you know, again, to perform certain things, maybe certain things to change within our family, within our community, within our ummah. But we may think the way that we're asking for it is beneficial, right? Like, I want this to take place in the community. I want this person in my family to do this, right? You may say, I want, you know, my son or my daughter to become a doctor, right? That might be your specific dua. And you may think that that's what's good for them. Allah knows whether that's good for them or not. So although you may have a good intention in mind, Allah knows whether this is actually good for that individual, right? So that, what I'm saying here is that spiritually immature, ignorant dua is that this, that look, I may ask for specific things even when it comes to spirituality, but I don't really know whether that's actually good for my spirituality, my family spirituality, my community spirituality, or the ummah at large, humanity at large. These are things that we have to keep in mind as well. I mean, even think about the, the way that we try to progress as a community, right? You know, even thinking about us. You know, alhamdulillah, many of you now have been coming to me with different suggestions about, you know, how to tweak the program and change things here and there, right? And this is something that we've been talking about for pretty much the past year. So, you know, I always love when uh, people offer their, their critical feedback, right? It's really good. So... I want to give you my side of it. Right? So, for, so, for example, one of the things that has been uh, recommended or requested is if the, you know, Ghambayan and Musiba can be recited on Thursday nights. Right? It's a fair request. Right? Obviously, listening to the Musiba of Aba Abdullah, Imam Hussein, alayhi salatu wasalam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. It's always a beneficial thing. It's always good for our hearts. It removes nifaq. It improves us. Right? That's it's good. Now. Some will say that it's specifically recommended on Thursday to do that. So again, over there, if I'm being nitpicky, no, not exactly it's right that Musiba recitation is recommended on Thursday night. Is Ziyadah recommended? Yes. Ziyadah is recommended and we recite Ziyadah Wadifah, right, on Thursday nights. Is there sometimes usually So Salam or Marcia recited on Thursday nights? Yeah. Again, that's what I understood is also a remembrance uh, of Imam Hussein and the Shuhada as well. Now, again, I would love to be able to take care of everybody's requests and considerations. Right? I would love to be able to add in a Ghambayan, Musiba, and Masaib you know, on Thursday nights. I need to give you my perspective as well so you understand. I've got, what, 30, 35 minutes, and I always end up pushing it, right? 30, 35 minutes, because let's face it, after 15, 20 minutes, let's be honest, after 10 minutes, you're all on your phones anyway. So I've got to work within a very, very limited amount of time. I've got to answer Slido questions, which takes time if I really want to answer it. I have to recap previous lectures and previous discussions because nobody, most people are not going to take notes. So, you know, I want to remind you, and people have said that they like the reminders and they like the recaps, the summaries. Then I have to go through new material, right? You know, I want to offer new material. Then sometimes I have to resummarize that too because, oh, it was too much. That 10 minute information was too much, so I have to resummarize that. Then after that, we have to have a quiz because it's got to be interactive. We're going to get bored, right, in this time. So all of that needs to be accomplished for all the different demographics and age ranges and people who are religious, people who are cultural, people who are young and old, the ones who are passing out, the ones who are wide awake, every single person within 30 to 35 minutes. 
if I want to add on that Musiba, that Masaib, that Ghambayan, even if it's a few minutes, again, I'm already pushing that timing thing, but where exactly would that go, number one? Now, one of the reasons that we've decided to have this quiz, which I think all the demographics, young and old, have said this is nice, we like this, right? It helps us remember the material, we get random questions, it's nice, it's interactive, it's fun, right? And we have a little banter back and forth, right? If I were to recite the gham and musiba before that, I don't know, it feels a little inappropriate to me, right? You know, we're joking around, and then I jump to a musiba. I don't know, I would feel a little strange doing that. I think it would sound a little strange too. Can you imagine? I mean, forget the quiz thing. Imagine, right, right before any other mulan or speaker in Muharram or any majlis on a shahada, they start cracking jokes, and then as soon as they're done, and now we take off their imam, and now we remember Abba Abdullah. That's, that's disrespectful. It's inappropriate. So for me, it feels a little strange to go from that gham, or sorry, to go from quiz to musiba. And then vice versa too. So let's say I do the quiz first. Again, with all the banter and everything. Oh, sorry, I mentioned both ways, right? So I said yeah, quiz and then musiba would be a bit strange. Or if I do musiba first, I do all this and, you know, everybody, obviously, they, you know, they, they come into that, uh, that state of connection with the Ba'abdullah. And then, you know, after we all wipe our tears or whatever, we regain composure, whatever you want to call it. Now we jump onto a quiz and we laugh about it. Again, I don't know, for me that feels a little strange. So if you can figure out a way that would make sense, I'm, I'm all ears. Like I said, I'm, as I said, when we first gathered that first Thursday night, I'm willing to adjust your, your order. You send it to the kitchen, I can try to adjust here and there, but I also don't want to do bi to the name of the Ahlul Bayt. I have to be careful of that as well. For me, it feels very, very strange to do that because, again, that quiz portion seems very beneficial to many individuals and people have been asking to keep that. And the Ghambayan, with its benefit that's there, it seems like I don't know where to add it. If it's added in, it'll add in a lot of, little bit of extra time. And in the previous surveys that we've sent out also, people have been saying either the amount of these Thursday night programs is just right, or people have said it's too long. So if you said it's too long and then you want me to add the Ghambayan, then again, now it's really, really long, right? And if it's just right and we add this two, three minutes in, then it might, you might you know, get into the position that it's too long. So I'm, I, wanna, I wanna work with you. I'm just trying to figure out, I need your help. What do you want me to do? All right, so if there's different ideas that you have, please, you know, you can tell the MC, the volunteers, you can email me, WhatsApp, whatever. Let me know what your ideas are, and we'll, you know, try to figure it in. I'm thinking out, I'm you know, thinking about my ideas, what would make sense. You know, I'm kind of at a loss. I'm not exactly sure. I have a few things, but I'd like to see what you'd like as well. And hopefully we can come to a conclusion and a compromise that I think would be beneficial to everybody. The reason I'm mentioning it in this line is this. What I would ask from you, Right? I've spent, I've spent you know, a couple years of my life trying to study this idea of how we can benefit from the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt. What I would ask all of you who are requesting this and anything else that you're requesting from me, what I'd like you just to ask yourself is that, okay, the thing that I'm requesting from Hassan, is it something that I dislike, that I want, or is it something that I really think is good for my spirituality? Is it something that I'm asking because it's the way that we've been doing it? It's what I'm used to hearing. It's called whatever it is. I need to hear that, otherwise my night's not complete. Is that the reason? Or it's because, no, I really feel that truly this is good for my spirituality, something mentioned from the Ahlul Bayt, taught by the Ahlul Bayt. Think about that, and then, you know, you can get back to me with your ideas, inshallah. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So, with all of that, of course, yeah, we're already at 30 minutes. So let me just finish summarizing what we did last week. I guess we'll have to wait till, till next time, inshallah. So, again, to continue the, the summary from last time, we talked about this last point, which is about the only way for us to really know whether something is spiritually beneficial, whether it can really benefit us or not. Now, not just me saying, I think it's good for me. You know, I, 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 know I love doing this stuff. It's really manifesting and acting upon that narration of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wasalam. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى جل فرجهم من عرف نفسه فقد عرف ربه which we mentioned last week we really need to engage in true self reflection self awareness معرفة النفس figure out who we really are not the superficial version that we think we are deep down there's a true identity that we have we have to break through some barriers that may have been built up over 30, 40, 50, 60 years we have to break through that shell and find out what's really going on inside there are some techniques and skills Again, maybe in our next session we can, we can do that. Once we work on that, then we'll start to see certain doors opening up. Then we'll get to see a true beneficial thing for us. Like, ah, oh, now I see something that can benefit me spiritually. 
And that's one of the things that we'll be talking about next week, inshallah, is how do I ask for the right things? How do I get the right response from Allah, right? If what I'm asking for specifically is wrong, well, what do I say? What are the right words to use? What we're going to talk about is that when Allah responds, sometimes it's what we want and sometimes it's not what we were asking for. So there, we now go back to that verse that we had mentioned last time. Allah was saying that, you know, if you ask me, ud'uni, astajib lakum, I'll answer you. It's like, Allah, you said to make dua and you'll answer us. We made dua, you're not answering us. We, you said it's khair, but, you know, well, why is it the case? Why are you saying, ask us, ask me, and, and then you'll answer, but you're not doing it? And it's because that there's a difference between the types of jawab and answers that, and responses that Allah gives. There is one that's istijab or istijaba, and there's another thing known as ijaba. So what I'd like for all of you to do, uh, we don't have time to discuss the, remember I said there's two verses we wanted to examine, two ayat. Read uh, Surah Baqarah, right? Surah 2, ayah 186. I'll just read it, and then I'd like for all of you to go home, reflect on it, and discuss it with your families. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It's a famous one. We all know it. Whenever, right, the, Allah is talking to the Rasul. Whenever somebody asks you, Ya Muhammad, about me, one of your, my ibad, right, my servants asks you about me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيب The response is, I'm قَرِيب, I'm close. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَ تَدَعِي إِذَا دَعَان I answer the, the, the dua of the person who calls me whenever they make the dua. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي So, you know, uh, reply to me or answer me. So, respond to me and have iman in me so that you can feel, get this rushd, this irshad, this guidance. If we reflect on the previous ayah that we talked about, in this one, then you'll begin to see that there's two concepts that Allah is actually talking about here, istijaba and ijaba. Reflect on these verses and inshallah we'll open them up in our next session inshallah. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Okay, so let's just quickly go to the quiz. I apologize, we, we, we couldn't get into uh, new material today because of that. Uh, sorry, so I guess there is a question which I probably won't do tonight, but perhaps you can do alternate nights for the quiz and the Ghambayan. Yeah, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a feasible solution, right? Maybe we can just alternate it. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so you know, we'll take that into consideration. Thank you so much. Okay. So let's, yeah, I think we have enough people. So, Assalamu alaikum to everybody. Uh, let's just start the quiz then, inshallah. <laughs> I see all the, the names, yeah. Uh. I think he's, uh, oh, I think he's waiting 30 seconds for the, the ones at home, okay. So, um, the GOAT is Leo Messi. Sure, if you say so. Uh, constant improvement, Sufra warrior. Inshallah, we will win. Mahdi Jafar, Zahra, I'm paying attention. Kier Puri lover. I mean, you know, outside of keto, I think Kier is probably my, my favorite dessert, right? If cold, you know, lukewarm, piping hot, with cinnamon, without cinnamon, with shaved up, without, like, I don't know. Like, Kier was uh, my, 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 my mother, Marhuma. That was my favorite dessert from her. So, yeah, if I'm ever going to go non keto, this Kier would probably be it. I don't need the Puri with it, I just need the Kier. I know that's all that's there. So I can understand the uh, addiction, right? Driving Muslim turns. Okay, Abay Yar, we can we can start start now. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Why is Rajab the month of Rajab known as Asab, the month with the most pouring? Is it because du'as pour out of the mouths of mu'minin? Is it because peace and love pours out from the hearts of the mu'minin? Is it because rahma pours out from Allah? Or is it becomes, because drinks are poured out because of all the people fasting? Or is it because of all the cups of chai that are poured out by all the various centers throughout the Muslim world? Sometimes. Most of you remembered, we talked about this a few weeks ago. It's because of that outpouring, that torrential downpour of rahmah and mercy from Allah. Asant. Okay, second. Why is Rajab known as Asam, the most silent month? People, because people control their tongues due to fasting. People are busy praying and reciting du'as privately. Fighting is forbidden. Or ghibah, meaning backbiting, is forbidden. Right. 
So if you remember, both of these questions are coming from, we mentioned a uh, hadith attributed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala In which he mentioned, he, he gave two of these names to Rajab and then he explained why these names exist. So I just wanted to remind Mu'mineen about this, see if they remember. <clears throat> Asantum. All of them sound good, but it's actually the fact that because it's one of the um, shahru, ashhurul haram or muharram, that fighting is forbidden. So because, especially you know, during that time, the Arab jahids were always fighting pretty much. Now it's like pin drop silence because there's no longer fighting here. And that's why we said we should try our best, right? We're coming to a close for the month. If we haven't really taken the opportunity to try to mend relations with our spouses, with our children, with our family members, with our grandparents, our cousins, or whatever, our community members, now would be a good time, right? To make it, have that pin drop silence and try to, you know, reconcile issues that we may have with one another, right? This is one of the best months that we can do so. Okay, next. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been attributed to have said, the best of you is the one who is best, what? The best in giving out charity, the best in purifying their souls, the best with their family, or the best with their spouse. Or the one who makes the best cure for uh, The so he says is khairukum khairukum li ahli, the one with your ahl, your your family, right? That's that's the best. So again, that's why we were saying we should try to emphasize rebuilding really strong relationships with our family in this month both you know nuclear family and extended inshallah last question a carnivorous animal eats fish but what does a nucivorous or nucivorous animal eat is it fruit nuts nothing or seaweed Tough one. Huh? Some of these random questions are really crazy. And I got lucky with this because when you pick these Slido questions, you know, you have this random question generator. Usually I have to sit there for a few minutes because every question's about this, you know, like Lady Gaga, this thing. Or I'm like, I'm like okay, I, I can't really ask that on that <laughs> on a Thursday night. It's not the, the problem is people will probably get it right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But this time, first click, and then, alhamdulillah, this question came up. Wow, good job for those of you who guessed it and those of you who Googled it. So, yeah, apparently, it's those who animals that eat nuts. Okay, so, okay, wow, mashallah. Once again, I think just like last time, we have five people, all basically tying, all have gotten all four of them right. But Aristotle, right, has gotten it the quickest. So, congratulations to Aristotle, uh, Sufra Warrior following in second place, specialists in third, KQ, which I, I still don't know wh who it could be, because I can't think of Q last names. Um, and then PSP, whatever that could be. Okay. It'd be nice if you at least give me some hint as to who you are, right? You know, you can take some pride in the fact that you, you made it on the board. Okay, we will see you, inshallah. Just remember also, for those of you who are interested, we have the next virtual chai chat, the CB-sponsored one, on... Saturday night, it'll be broadcasted on the YouTube channel from 8.30 to 10 p.m., uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be with Sheikh Amin Rastani, who's the founder of the Mizan Institute. And we're going to be talking about off, uh, alternative forms of tabligh in Islamic education, which I think is very, very relevant to all of us who are trying to, you know, improve ourselves. So please tune in. Uh, he's a, you know, very, very wonderful resource. I've known him for a while, and I think it'll be a very enlightening discussion, inshallah. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته صلوات على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله 
السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا وارث عادم صفوة الله السلام عليك يا وارث نوح النبي الله السلام عليك يا وارث إبراهيم خليل الله السلام عليك يا وارث موسى كريم الله السلام عليك يا وارث عيسى روح الله السلام عليك يا وارث محمد حبيب الله السلام عليك يا وارث علي أمير المؤمنين ولي الله السلام عليك يا ابن محمد المصطفى السلام عليك يا ابن علي المرتضى السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء السلام عليك يا ابن خديجة الكبرى السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن ثاره والوتر الموتور أشهد أنك قد قمت السلاح وآتيت الزكاة وأمرت بالمعروف ونحيت عن المنكر وأتعط الله ورسوله حتى أتاك اليكين فلعن الله أمة قتلتك ولعن الله أمة ظلمتك ولعن الله أمة سمعت بذلك فرذيت به يا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله أشهد أنك كنت نورا في الأسلاب الشامخة والأرحام المطحرة لم تنجسك الجاهلية بأنجاسها ولم تلبسك من مطلهم ما تثيابها وأشهد أنك من تعيم الدين وأركان المؤمنين وأشهد أنك العائم إمام البر التقي الرذي الزكي الهادي المهدي وأشهد أن العمة من ولدك كلمة التقوى وعلام الهدى والعروة الوثقى والحجة على أهل الدنيا وأشهد الله وملائكته وأنبياه ورسله أني بكم مؤمن وبيا بكم موقن بشراع ديني وخواتيم عملي وقلبي لقلبكم سلم وأمري لأمركم متبع صلوات الله عليكم وعلى أرواحكم وعلى أجسادكم وعلى أجسامكم وعلى شاهدكم وعلى غائبكم وعلى ظاهركم وعلى باطنكم السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن نبي الله السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا ابن الحسين الشهيد السلام عليك أيها الشهيد وابن الشهيد السلام عليك أيها المظلوم وابن المظلوم لعن الله أمة قتلتك ولعن الله أمة ظلمتك ولعن الله أمة سمعت بذلك فرثيت به السلام عليكم يا أولياء الله وإحباه السلام عليكم يا أسفي الله وأوداه السلام عليكم يا أنصار دين الله السلام عليكم يا أنصار رسول الله السلام عليكم يا أنصار أمير المؤمنين السلام عليكم يا أنصار فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليكم يا أنصار أبي محمد الحسن بن علي الزكي الناسه السلام عليكم يا أنصار أبي عبد الله بأبي أنتم وأمي تبتم مطابة الأرض التي فيها دفنتم وفزتم فوزا عظيما فيا ليتني كنت معكم فأفوز معكم السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك أيها العبد عبد الصالح والمتي لله ولرسوله وأشهد أنك قد جاهدت ونسحت وصبرت حتى أتاك اليقين لعن الله الظالمين لكم من الأولين والآخرين والحقهم بدرك الجهيم السلام عليك يا مولاي وابن مولا السلام عليك يا غريب الغرباء السلام عليك يا سلطان بالحسن علي بن موسى الرضا ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا صاحب الزمان السلام عليك يا خليفة الرحمن السلام عليك يا شريك القرآن 
السلام عليك يا مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى جدك رسول الله وعلى أبيك أمير المؤمنين وألا أمك فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك وعلى أخيك الحسن الزكي الشهيد المسموم السلام عليك وعلى أخيك بالفضل الأباس السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين السلام عليك وعلى ابن عمك مسلم ابن عقيل وعلى ابن أخيك القاسم ابن الحسن السلام عليك وعلى ها ولديك العليين الشهيدين ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا غريب الغربة الثامن العمة النجبة السلطان بالحسن علي بن موسى أيها الرضا كن شفيانا وشفي والدين في يوم الجزاء السلام عليك وعلى أختك فاطمة المأسومة جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا هجة الله يا ابن الحسن يا صاحب العسر والزمان سيدي الأمان 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 من جور الزمان السلام عليك يا خليفة الرحمن السلام عليك يا إمامنا وإمام الإنس والجان اللهم اكشف هذه الأمة هذه الأمة بهذوره وأجل لنا ظهوره إنهم يرونه بعيدا ونراه قريبا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته